Hello, my name's Matthew Harrison. I'm a farming system scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture, and this video follows previous APSIM videos that I've done on YouTube since 2018. In this presentation, we'll look at APSIM Next Generation, which is the most recent version of APSIM. Previous videos that I've done, and the links for these are below, with APSIM Classic, which is the older version. To open an APSIM file, an APSIM Next Generation file, there's multiple ways that you can do it, but the way that I like to do it is uh, go to your Start menu if you're on Windows 10, go to the AppSim User Interface and open up from there. And when you open up, you'll see these menus across the top, uh, starting with Open an Existing AppSim File or an Example, which we're about to look at, and then you have a number of different management toolboxes. Probably an important one to point out is this Upgrade button. So if you haven't done it for a couple of months, uh, if you haven't opened AppSim Next Generation for a couple of months, in contrast to previous versions, you had to download the more recent version, AppSim Next Generation has all of these upgrades on here. So you just hit Upgrade, and then it shows you the bug fixes. You say you obviously read through the terms and conditions, then check the box that you agree to the terms and conditions and hit Upgrade. I'm not going to do it in this context because it might, might take a little bit too long, but you should generally do that each time you open up AppSim. So if we just start from an example, we can hit this button here, Open an Example. You have a number of different examples here, and it shows you the directory which with there in there. We might do barley in this example, so we just open up barley here. We just wait for it to open. Uh, and it comes up with a component tree on the left-hand side with simulations, and then it's got essentially the parent and the child, which is the subcomponents under each. So the parent is the large one, and the child is the sub-nodes underneath, if you like. AppSim Next Generation has these descriptions for each component, so it's saying that Simulations encapsulate the range of model simulations and it's responsible for creating uh, and changing the structure of the components within the simulations, renaming components, adding new ones and so on. So to run a simulation, you right click and then you hit run AppSim. You, send, you generally shouldn't do that before uh, you've looked, at all the comp looked and checked at all the components. You can also run on cloud for big AppSim files, and that's also quite useful. In this presentation, we'll just look at running AppSim. There's also running AppSim on multiprocessors, which is an experimental uh, feature at this stage. So if we expand the node, we have a number of different components. The clock determines the duration of an AppSim simulation. So AppSim is a daily time step model, uh, and it runs... Uh, so it runs the longer the duration that you put in, the longer the duration of the simulation. So if I put in, for example, uh, you know, back to 1800, this is going to take twice as long. So it's going to run from the 1st of 1st, 1900, to the 31st of the 12th, 2000. And generally, dates have to be in that format. The summary file is an output log. So after the simulation is run, we'll have a bunch of things that occur here. And if there's errors, it's this is where the error usually occurs. So do we want to capture warning messages and error messages? Yes. So just make sure these are checked. Then you have weather. Now, the weather tab is also uh, met meteorology, and so it's quite useful. So if you look carefully at what it's saying here, it's it's giving you specification of the long-term climate characteristics for each site. So it's giving you the latitude, which is in latitude from uh, the equator. So this is negative 27. So this is mid-Australia. If it was positive 27, it would be in the northern hemisphere. It's giving you the average temperature amplitude. It's giving you the sorry. It's giving you the temperature. Uh, wavelengths, it's giving you the temperature amplitude and it's giving you the start and end date, date of your MET file. It's, uh, it, what it shows you there is essentially the long-term characteristics. So the bars are the rainfall. Uh, this top bar here is the maximum daily temperature, average for each month across the year, and this bottom one. So we're seeing we can get we're getting frosts in winter time. It's getting close to zero, but not too bad. The average maximum temperature, of course, we're in the southern hemisphere, so we're seeing peaks in January and February. So it's always useful just to have a quick look at that before you begin a simulation. We can then go over to the data tab, and it's showing the individual data characteristics that's been in, that's put in there. So we have radiation in megajoules per square metre per day. We have maximum minimum temperature in degrees Celsius. We have rainfall. We have pan evaporation, both of which are in millimetres. We have vapour pressure, which is in hectopaxels. We have a, a code, uh, and we have Qmax. Uh, and then we have uh, more detailed charts. So we have rainfall chart for the year 1900, and we can put in several years, if you like, or put it back to just one. So it's useful for looking at data to see if it's realistic. 
uh, we have monthly rainfall, we have temperature trends, so these are daily and we can look at different years to see how those trends might change, and we have radiation. So a, a useful check that I find is for, we're in the southern hemisphere, so you should see that the, just to see if you've put the weather data incorrectly, it should be minimum in the middle of the year for southern hemisphere locations and maximum in January and February at, at the ends of the year. And then we have the soil arbitrator, that doesn't say anything, but that essentially controls the things like nitrogen supply and demand, so uptake and, uh, uptake and release of nitrogen uh, from the plant, so it's like, a, it's like a switch within the model. And then we have the field and field components. So this can have multiple things or it can have you know, very few things if you like. Again, if you right click, you'll, you'll see different uh, sub menus there. So if you expand this here, we have a number of, there's a number of components that are essential and there's other components that are not essential. So we have report uh, and these, this is quite different to the layout of AppSim Classic. So one of the useful things you might say is, okay, I wanna add another variable. So and you might not know what the code is. So a useful thing I find is just to copy it. You just go in and put another row in and the same, but as soon as you put put the uh, dot there, or put the full stop rather, uh, you see all the variables pop up. So instead of APSIM total weight, you want APSIM metabolic N, which you know essentially gets or sets the metabolic N, or you, want, you might want uh, total nitrogen, so we double click on it and up it comes there. Or you can delete back, and as soon as you put barley, you press dot there, and it says all of the you know optional variables that come up. And so some of them some of them can be outputs, and others won't be outputs. So if we click on grain, it'll it'll come up with the uh, sub variable. Then you hit point again, and then it's going to say, okay, what part of grain do you want? And so you can s essentially select a different variable there. So what I find quite useful here is the description. So you just have to carefully read the description. If it hasn't got a description, then then it may or may not be a, an output. So you just have to check that carefully. So we'll just take that out. So the other thing to point out there is that uh, each of these variables are in brackets. So this today variable is an output of the clock uh, module. I'm not quite sure what your component is. It's called a subcomponent. Uh, and so if we if we take out that, today and hit point, you'll see a number of different variables come up for clock. So these are potentially different output variables that we can use for clock. But we'll put we'll put today back in just for the sake of example. Fertilizer is a module, a self-contained module. You don't have to modify that. Soil, you need a soil within a field to run the module. Surface or so we'll just go back to soil. Now these are just descriptions within the soil, useful for your own record keeping. None of these data are actually used in the simulation, but it's useful if you go back in 12 months to say what you did. We have surface organic matter. So you have the name of the residue pool, you have the type of initial residue, and you can go down here to a drop down and pick, you know, if it's not wheat, it might be an alternative crop. So you've got a range of options there. You have the mass of initial surface residue, standing fraction, carbon to nitrogen ratio and so on. You have a microclimate, so these are, this is essentially a microclimate calculator within the overall calculator. The default in this example is it's in there. The important point to note is that AppSim Next Generation will run without that component, so you can totally delete that if you like. These are fixed variables, so I'd encourage you not to modify any of these variables unless you know what you're doing. Surface fertiliser, so sowing fertiliser rather, so this applies nitrogen once, so this is going to apply 160 kilograms of nitrogen and it's saying what crop do I want to fertilise, well I want to fertilise wheat. Uh, the individual script you can change there, so this is, uh, you, this is the actual script used to program that parameters there, so you can change that if you like, generally to keep it simple for starters I just advise that you change this. And then harvest, you need a harvest routine to say when the crop is mature, which is essentially what this crop is saying. If the crop is ready for harvest, then harvest it and then end the crop. But you don't need to necessarily take note of this script. You just have to take note that you need this component to run the simulation. You then have the crop type, which is like which is like fertilizer, which is fixed, and then you have the sowing date. So what the sowing date says is it says what genotype to sow. I need to sow barley because we've got barley in this tree. We need to have the sowing date. The cultivar to be sown, which is again a drop-down menu, so you can pick from different different cultivars there. 
uh, and generally some of these have been more well parameterized than others uh, and there's publications in the literature on that sowing depth uh, your row spacing and your plant population and so you can run alternative simulations to see how these might change and then you've got your graphs your data store is useful for if you want to compare against observed data I'm not going to go into that in this presentation so to run a simulation you just simply right click hit run app sim then it's saying this has come up because I'm trying to run an example so we'll just say barley example and you have to save it not in program files so I'll just save it here for the sake of example uh, and I'll hit run and hopefully now AppSim says well I'm going to run it uh, and if all goes well this will run without error so we just wait a minute for it to complete it tells you obviously the the progress of the simulation down here and you can stop it if you've realized you've made a mistake okay so it's completed uh, and it makes a little completion sound then you can graph so what this graph is showing is it's showing just wheat yield and so you can go in here and change the, the forms of you can click on this and change so I don't I don't necessarily want the lines so you can say well line type I don't really want any none so it's going to change it there and so the outputs are different then you might say well uh, looking at that graph I can see that I'm getting high yields at the start and uh, over time the yields actually decrease so there's something seriously wrong happening in that simulation so something we might like to do is go back to home and if I want to that's only going to fertilize on a, on a fixed date at sowing so what I really want to do is fertilize over the life of the crop so I'll go back here to home I'll go to my management toolbox and we just had a few pauses there it was just taking a little while so it's opened it up a couple of times now you've got a number of different options here you've got sow on a fixed date which we have we've got harvesting fertilize on fixed dates fertilize on zadok stage that's probably what we want and you have a number of different alternative managements here we want to fertilize at sowing so uh, we don't want to fertilize at sowing we want to fertilize at zadok stage so we copy uh, we go back to our example and then noting that it's on the field we paste it uh, that management on the field and then we say okay I might want to fertilize uh, at Zadok stage 30 which is the start of stem elongation what's the type of urea I want to what's the type of fertilizer I want to apply and you've got a number of different options there uh, and I might want to put on 60 just to make sure that it grows you then go back and rerun the simulation but to make this quicker uh, we might say okay we're going to end it at uh, say 1950 just to make it run quicker you go back again you hit run apps him and then what we essentially do is the advantage in such tools is that you compare so they're a what if tool you compare against what you did before so we rerun the simulation and then we have another look at the graph and so what we can see is that the outputs the average long-term yield is now much higher and so what would what's that essentially telling us is that the crop was running out of nitrogen from one year to a neck to the next because it was a continuous barley simulation so that's all I'm going to say in this presentation but in the next presentation I'll show you how to manipulate graphs uh, and to look at different styles of outputs